Zero. Good afternoon. Good Friday to everyone because that's what it is at 9.43 a.m. Pacific St Standard Time, 2.25 of 2011. We are going to cover on this website called smfprotrader.com. That's one of our apprenticeship, uh, 52-week apprenticeship attendees uh, who's doing a wonderful job and keeping us updated with the news. So basically, I'm going to click on the human genome link and within the link structure we're going to approve we're going to read what this means and I'll actually have the MMT who is involved read the human genome approval soon and that's about the bin listed go ahead sir well we have right here an article human genome approval soon this is by RBC capital it says that the launch of the long-term estimates look reasonable based on the monthly patient build. Uh, the RBC thinks some investors have a short, short the launch thesis because many biotech launches have been disappointing. And HGSI will also have its own logistical headwinds to get through at the start, widely telegraphed. However, RBC thinks the 6 to 12-month estimates look reasonable and thus we'd buy the stock on weakness in the near term. It is not clear if the company will give specific patient numbers during the launch, but we should get good metrics to support the progress, and that RBC will be looking for patient numbers of 1,000 in Q2 and 2,000 at Q3. Okay, so the amount of work that uh, stockmarketfunding.com and then, of course, yourself as an MMT, you've been through extensive clinical trials and following and doing everything, and you're feeling confident that Ben Lista had a special protocol agreement with the FDA. Can you touch on what that SPA was about? Right. Now, remember, the special protocol assessment is a agreement uh, that the company and the FDA go into where they set up the terms of the tests and the out and the uh, result out points before going into the clinical trials they set up all of the points and everything that you know the endpoints and the objectives and they set that up going into the clinical trials and upon positive results of those endpoints being met the FDA will approve the drug. That's an SPA in a, in, a, in a nutshell, so to speak, and Human Genome has that, and they received and met all those endpoints, and they got their 14 to 1 safety approval, saying that the drug was safe by the ADCOM panel, and then, of course, the overwhelming 13 to 2 approval uh, entirely by the ADCOM panel. Uh, well, one of my main things is, since you have been going through your treatment process as far as your training process with this, is have you found that it's very rare for an SPA with the FDA? Is that a very rare event? An SPA is a rare event because it's something that happens where the companies go into it beforehand. Most of the approval processes in that you see don't get awarded SPAs by the FDA. Okay. So yes. All right, that's what I wanted to know. That means that the company in itself, HGSI, Human Genome Sciences, would have had to have had special arrangements within the protocol patient orientation and treatment process in the free trials with a very well documented risk factor as to how people were being receptive within taking the bin list of treatments. It was also recorded during those trials that when they had the big, big panel review that they had the longest patient success history testimonials before the FDA, did they not? That's right. And what was that all about? Well, it was an overwhelming show of support from first-hand patients showing how much this drug has changed their life. Now, it's important to remember that the SPA is awarded to companies like HGSI in this case for drugs that show uh, incredible potential that are trying to get to the market immediately to fill that short-term need. So it's, you know, it's, that's why it was awarded to human genome because of the incredible potential and impact it will have for those who suffer from lupus. 
And we saw in the patient testimony how, I think it was 26 or 29 uh, testimonies, I forget the exact number, came up and all testified in overwhelming support for Ben Lista and how the drug had, you know, improved their quality of life. Well, would it be to would it be fair to say that the bigger investment community throughout your tenure of research into this company, would it be fair to say that you have learned well how to follow the big money and human genome? Is there a relationship between big Wall Street money and human genome, sir? There absolutely is, and uh, they can refer, anyone listening to this can refer to our previous videos we've done just recently on SMF Pro Trader or www.stockmarketfunding.com, which shows the increase of positions over time and the money flow into human genome sciences. We have it very well documented in video form. Okay, so if someone was going to try to benefit by looking at the pros and the cons, um, that would be a good place to start and it would be a safe place to start because we don't have an agenda one way or the other other than we're on the breaking the verge of, of a breaking treatment that can really help some suffering people over 50 years there's been no treatment that's a huge thing yes it is there was another article on here that you posted let's go back and take a look at it there seems to be one up above here Hold on, I'm having a trouble with my mouse. And I'm going to click on this one. Uh, this is Stifle. Now, would you like to touch on what Stifle, what, what this is about today, other than the other one? So who is this about, and where did yeah, it come Yeah, this from? is Nicholas Stifle, uh, Stifle Nicholas. Uh, human genome Stifle is waiting for Ben Lista approval. That's the current price. They have been a longtime supporter and advocate for the efficacy of uh, Ben Lista and have remained an outspoken uh, proponent for human genome and Ben Lista being approved. And this is them coming out again. And the article says that um, Stifle is waiting for the Ben Lista approval. It notes that based on discussions with Lupus KOLs, they remain very optimistic that the FDA will approve Ben Lista by the March 10, 2011 PDUFA date and do not expect major label restrict restrictions for either musculoskeletal, mucotaneous, or racial subgroups. They anticipate the U.S. launch in uh, the second quarter of 2011, followed by an EU launch in Q3-11. They continue to expect Ben Lista to generate worldwide 2015 sales of $3.6 Well, let me ask you this, young man.